In the year 2020, we are fortunate enough to see a fair amount of women serving in the Senate and the House of Representatives. But how did it all begin? Throughout history, it's extremely evident that influential women are silenced, ignored, and not given credit where credit is due. We don't often talk about the first women to break onto the political scene in the U.S. and the very first woman elected to Congress, who was Jeanette Rankin. She was a suffragette, a progressive reformer, and served on the House of Representatives as a Republican from Montana. She was elected in 1916 and again in 1940. While in office, Rankin introduced legislation that would later become the 19th Amendment, helped enfranchise women in a number of individual states, was one of 50 representatives to oppose declaring war on Germany in 1917, and was the only member of either House of Congress to vote against declaring war on Japan and thus joining World War II in 1941. Rankin's work for the women's rights and progressive movements and her political beliefs and actions were very influential. Her achievements paved the way for other women to vote and run for office. We would not have the amount of women in office today that we do if it hadn't been for Jeanette Rankin. Rankin was born in 1880 near Missoula, Montana. She was the oldest of six children. Her parents were Olive Pickering Rankin, a teacher, and John Rankin, a carpenter and rancher who was also a Scottish-Canadian immigrant. The Rankins lived on a farm, and as a young girl, Jeanette noticed the inequalities that women dealt with every day of their lives. She found it really unjust that although women out on the frontier did the same amount of work as men daily on the farm, they lacked the political, legal, and and social voice and opportunities that men had. After graduating from high school in 1898, Rankin earned her bachelor's degree in biology from the University of Montana in 1902. When she was 27, Rankin moved to San Francisco to become a social worker and studied at both the New York School of Philanthropy, part of Columbia University, and the University of Washington, which is where she got involved with the suffrage movement. Then, Rankin went back to New York and joined the National American Women's Suffrage Association, eventually becoming the president of the Montana chapter and the national organization's field secretary. She became the first woman to speak in front of the Montana legislature in 1911 on behalf of the suffrage movement, and three years later, the state granted voting rights to women living there. Rankin employed grassroots organization to promote her cause at this time and when she ran for Congress in 1916. We see this method of grassroots organization today, especially when the candidate is just an average person like Jeanette Rankin was. Rankin ran for her seat in the House in the 1916 election as a progressive candidate, championing prohibition, suffrage, and other social issues of the time. She traveled through the largely rural state of Montana, campaigned, and defeated Frank Linderman, becoming the first female member of Congress. This was a moment of extreme historical significance, and Rankin's victory would shake things up and set a precedent for decades to come. In April 1917, Rankin became one of 50 representatives and six senators to vote against joining World War I. She was the only one of all the Congress members to be subject to intense criticism for her choice, as prominent women in political positions always are. Rankin defended her position, however, saying years later that she felt the first time a woman had a chance to say no to war, she should say it. In addition to promoting her pacifist ideology, Rankin used her time in office to fight for better labor conditions, eventually persuading the Treasury Secretary of the U.S. to limit the workday of laborers in the Bureau of Printing and Engraving to eight hours a day. She also worked on legislation that would become the 19th Amendment that was passed soon after her first term in Congress ended. This was a major victory for Rankin and the women's suffrage movement. Between terms in Congress, Rankin worked with the National Consumers League and several pacifist groups, founding the Georgia Peace Society in 1928. She began campaigning in Congress again by touring Montana high schools in 1939. She did face some opposition, but in 1940, she defeated Jerry J. O'Connell in the general congressional election. Rankin was 60 years old now, and she was appointed to the House Committees on Public Lands and Insular Affairs. On December 8, 1941, the day after the Pearl Harbor attack, Rankin became the only Congress member to vote against going to war with Japan, refusing to abstain from voting or changed her, change her vote to make it unanimous when she was asked to. She faced major ridicule and criticism for her choice, as she had in 1917, but in the Kansas Emporia Gazette, William, reporter William Allen Wright wrote that probably a hundred men in Congress would have liked to do what she did. Not one of them had the courage to do it. The Gazette entirely disagrees with the wisdom of her position, but Lord, it was a brave thing. 
Despite facing major scrutiny as a woman in Congress, Jeanette Rankin was able to stick by her beliefs and was immensely brave to publicly oppose World War II when every single other member of Congress voted the way they were expected to, whether or not they actually supported going to war. Jeanette Rankin did not run for Congress again after her 1940 term ended. She instead spent the rest of her life traveling and protesting the Vietnam War and getting involved with various other movements for feminism, pacifism, and civil rights. In 1972, when she was in her 90s, Rankin considered a third run for office to influence opposition to the Vietnam War, but ultimately decided not to. She never married as she preferred to focus on her political career and died in Carmel, California in 1973. As the first woman ever elected to Congress, Rankin made history and set a precedent for other women to get involved with politics and run for office. She was also instrumental in the adoption of the 19th Amendment, and she remained steadfast in her beliefs of feminism, pacifism, workers' rights, and civil rights, despite facing a high level of scrutiny and misogynistic criticism as the only women in Congress. In 1972, at the Montana Constitutional Convention, Rankin said, if I am rem remembered for no other act, I want to be remembered as the only woman who ever voted to give women the right to vote.